Hi all, welcome to my spring-a-thon vlog. Also sorry that the lighting in my room is like very green right now. I think it's because I get a lot of sunlight in through my window, but the trees have all like fully sprouted their leaves and such here because I'm in a like subtropical climate. So the light that comes in my room is now very green. But I thought I would quickly kind of go over the books that I'm hoping to read for the spring-a-thon. I've not yet started anything. It's still the morning of Saturday, May 1st, so the first day of the spring-a-thon. And I do have to go do an errand related to foster dogs for my mom with my dad. So we should be getting a new foster dog today which we took a break from it for a couple weeks but now we're back there was a like short clip of the last foster dog we had in my beginning of April vlog which I'll put a link to up in the cards above but we're getting another one today so I have to go pick her up with my dad and also maybe walk some other dogs I'm not entirely sure what we're doing but I thought I would kind of introduce you to the books that I'll be reading during this vlog all of which I talked about in my spring on tbr slash may tbr which I'll put a link to up in the cards above as well but I figured I'd also introduce them here in case you didn't watch that video so the first book that I'll be reading I don't remember what any of these books are for in terms of the prompts but you could look at my tbr to figure that out is fathoms the world and the whale by rebecca giggs i'll be listening to this one on audiobook and i have to set up my may bullet journal spreads today at some point because it is the first of may and i didn't do it during the week so i'll probably start this one on audio while i'm doing that and hopefully get a fair amount of the way into it because that does usually take me a while to like set up the whole month's spreads and like the first week and stuff so this is the first one this is a non-fiction book about whales and their relationship to humans i think and i've heard really good things about this and also heard some positive things about the audiobook so i'm excited about that then i also am going to be reading all we can save truth courage and solutions to the climate crisis edited by ayana elizabeth johnson and Catherine k wilkinson and this one i've already determined because it's quite long and there's a lot of different entries in here i think there's over 60 or close to 60. i've already decided that this one is going to stretch through the entire month of May so I won't be finishing this one during the springathon vlog but I will give you my thoughts as I kind of read the first half of it I guess during this vlog so this is a essay collection slash kind of collection of poetry and I believe there's some illustrations in here from a variety of different people all working towards climate change solutions I believe there's a lot of indigenous voices in here as well as a kind of more international scale understanding of the climate crisis and the solutions that are kind of based in different places based on different needs so super excited about this one have heard nothing but amazing things from like the people that i do know that have read this so really excited to kind of dig into this one and be thinking about it more throughout the month and then i also am going to be deciding later today between starting two trees make a forest by jessica j lee and bleaker house by nell stevens i'm not sure which of these two i want to start today so i'm gonna try in a few pages or like the first chapter or something and just see which one is kind of taking my fancy more at this time and so my plan for these is to read one this week and one next week just because both of them are pretty short and they're memoirs so I feel like they'll go fairly quickly so I will be reading both of part of these today and deciding which one I want to like continue on with and then also on independent bookstore day which was last Saturday I got a few books because I was really in the springathon mood because I just filmed my springathon tbr like earlier that day so I got a few like springathon themed books that I thought I would just share with you if I happen to just have a really great two weeks of reading maybe I'll get to these but I'm not entirely sure the first of those I just wanted to show off the cover because I think it's really pretty but I won't be reading this this week is Ghost in a Black Girl's Throat by Kalisa Ray this is a poetry collection that I'll be reading for my June reading woman prompt of reading a poetry collection by a black woman and I just like really love this cover I feel like it is I mean it's more autumnal than like springy but it definitely has kind of like nature elements in it so there's that one I also got a copy of Stop Saving the Planet, an Environmentalist Manifesto by Jenny Price, which is a tiny little book about basically just the idea that saving the planet in terms of like protecting animals and kind of the non-human aspects of Earth is not really viable given that there's billions of people on Earth and that our climate change and environmental focus should really be on making the lives of people better and more sustainable as opposed to like necessarily creating a non-human utopia if that makes sense that was not the best way to describe it but it's certainly something that i've heard discussed a lot in like environmental science environmental studies circles so i'm kind of curious on her take on that because i think that is a really important aspect of 
climate action and environmental planning and that type of thing so super excited about this one and hopefully we'll be getting to it just because it is so teeny tiny so i may be including my thoughts on this one in this vlog and then i also got a fiction book which kind of fits i think the vibe of the spring Thon, which is the seed keeper by diane wilson this is out from milkweed editions which publishes a lot of kind of non-fiction related to the environment and fiction and poetry for that matter related to the environment and this is a novel written by wilson he is a member of the dakota tribe in western minnesota north dakota south dakota i believe she lives in minnesota currently she's enrolled on the rosebud reservation and lives in shaver minnesota and this is about a young dakota woman who grew up on the reservation but because of some like familial things that happened in her like late childhood early teen years i think she moved away from the reservation and now decades later is kind of coming back and reconciling her personal history and the relationship that her family has kind of had with the land through that history so i'm super excited about this one this was one of my like anticipated releases and they had it at independent bookstore day for the my favorite little bookstore here in atlanta they have opened up their port on saturdays for little like port pop-ups because they don't want people inside their store although they are reopening in june which is great and so they on independent bookstore day had a bunch of their like favorite staff recommendations so this was one of those so i was excited that they enjoyed it because that means that i probably will enjoy it even more than i anticipated so I'm super excited about this one and if i can get to it i would love to read it during the springathon but it also is kind of long and I have lots of other plants so we'll see i might not talk about this books ever again in this vlog hi all so it is much later now i haven't actually done all that much reading today because we got the new foster dog which i will hopefully get some footage of her name is molly she's very pretty and then i took a short nap and then i was painting my nails and catching up with a friend which is something we do pretty often which is really fun but i wanted to let you know that i think i'm gonna pick bleaker house to read as opposed to two trees make a forest at least for now this one is just like a little just not quite what i'm looking for right now i think so this one was just kind of capturing me a bit more so i'm going to continue reading this one today as well as the other ones that i mentioned previously it gets close to six o'clock already the day has gone by pretty quick but i might also just kind of lie in bed and watch youtube videos i haven't quite decided but i think this evening i'll probably also be doing some reading so i definitely will be getting some reading done tonight and then obviously tomorrow as well it is a sunday afternoon i spent most of the day filming and editing my april wrap up which i'll put a link to up in the cards above and then during my little breaks i've been reading all we can save which i am loving so far i think it's gonna be definitely a five-star read really phenomenal i love just kind of the idea in general and i think the pieces will be really thought-provoking and interesting but right now i'm about to start doing my bullet journal spreads for may because i didn't get around to doing them yesterday and i'll be listening to fathoms as an audiobook so i think that's my plan for right now i'm going to show you some of the bullet journal spreads because i think that would be fun also please ignore it over there that's just a disaster zone so i think that's the plan for now and then after that if i have time i'm going to try to clean up my room a bit because it's been a while and i keep putting it off because my cat is sleeping when i want to do it in the room which is not a real excuse so i need to do it now because he's not sleeping in here so yeah that's kind of my plan for the rest of the evening i'm also making a fun classic thing that we like to make called tofu sheet pan which i will probably show a few clips of if i remember so those are my plans for the rest of the evening and i'll kind of take you along through some b-roll footage I thought I heard someone going downstairs, but then I wasn't sure. I'm getting some B-roll. Hello, YouTube. I didn't want you to know that this woman was going to stab me. I was not going to stab you. I yes. just was surprised. But anyway, I'm watching YouTube videos while I 
prepare dinner as I often do. And I've been getting a lot of like really big tech, like the future is now type of ad. Anne knows that I saw an ad about a robot for oh, your robot child, baby. like social development issues and it cost like $1,300 and it was a very creepy but also heartfelt ad. Um, but right now the ad I'm watching is for Nutrisystem and it has major like 90s, what's it called? Like the, sh the channels that are only ads. Oh. It has big vibes like that. It's like, buy Nutrisystem for nineteen ninety nine. Like an infomercial. Infomercials. There we go. There we go. I mean, it has big infomercial vibes. Wait, since you're here. No. Do you want to help me at all? Do you want to help me? Mm, maybe if you help me. Um, but sure. Yeah. I'm trying to get past a paywall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the best way getting past the paywall. And then once I get past the paywall, I'm trying to print the page, but print it into a PDF. Mm. Um, oh my. A cat. He must have been. Should I probably stop recording so that I don't waste space on Jenny's phone? That's not my job. That's the one. I quit print it. Can I see oh, but one page. Oh no. Oh. It's a oh. little bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you wanna bring this? Oh, well, fuck you. Fuck you. Telegraph, why do you even have a paywall for every single article? Yeah, telegraph thing. But if you register your email address, you could read the website free for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Are you in? I can do that. She's so nice to me. It's been a few days since I last checked in. It is Wednesday, May 5th right now. I just got home from work not too long ago. And the past couple of days have been just super busy. On Monday, I was working on filing my taxes and paying all of that. And so that was a busy thing. And then Tuesday, yesterday, I was having some apartment like leasing stress, but I officially received the lease on my apartment in Charlottesville, which was super exciting. Definitely will you know, show you the apartment once I live there, although I'm not moving until August, so I have some time. But I thought I would check in on how my Springathon reading is going because I haven't really done that. I think maybe even since Saturday. Let's start with Fathoms just because that's what's closest in front of me. I'm about a hundred-ish pages, yeah, a few chapters into this, and I've been listening to this one on audio. I'm enjoying it. It's a little lyrical for my taste and it's also reminding me of Spying on Whales by Nick Penyonson and Penyonson is a paleontologist or paleobiologist at the Smithsonian and that one is a lot more about whales as a species and kind of their ecological history and their natural history and this one is a lot more kind of reflective using whales as an analog to kind of reflect on humans and their relationship to the environment which I knew from the blurb I just like wasn't quite expecting it to be this kind of introspective if that makes sense but I am enjoying it I think it's really engaging um, and there's a lot of really kind of interesting little pieces here and the audiobook is pretty well done it's narrated by an Australian person because Rebecca Gates is also Australian so that's been fun to like listen to her Australian accent and there's a lot of anecdotes with the author in terms of like interactions she's had with whales which I do find interesting as well and as I said I've only read like two or three chapters so you know I still have a ways to go some of this is notes and stuff but I still have quite a bit to go so this one will definitely be continuing I think into next week in terms of my audiobook listening and then all we can save I'm about 68 pages of the way through I've gotten through the first section which was root which was a lot of entries from like indigenous writers about indigenous wisdom and its relationship to the climate crisis which I thought was really engaging now I am in the advocate section which I think will be interesting the last one I read was litigating in the time of crisis I think and that one was about a lawyer who's an environmental lawyer and kind of working in her community and how it felt to litigate an environmental problem happening directly in her community. So I think it's kind of a lot of very personal essays. I've not gotten into a ton of essays like specifically providing solutions but primarily more reflection at this time of like people who are involved in the climate action movement which is still engaging I'm still enjoying this and it's just like really well put together. Every section begins with a picture or a drawing rather um, which is really nice. 
and so it's just kind of a well put together book I feel like and I think as a whole it'll feel even more relevant than kind of the individual sum of its parts if that makes sense and then I've also made quite a bit of progress in Bleecker House by Nell Stevens up today during my like lunch time while the girls were all eating lunch I read to about page 140 it looks like so I only have about 100 pages left of this one so if I kind of push myself I could finish this tomorrow definitely by Friday or like the early weekend I should be able to finish this one and I'm enjoying it I think my favorite parts are definitely her like travel writing and discussing actually living on the Falkland Islands and attempting to write her book as she does kind of sometimes go back to her life prior to living in the Falkland Islands and I don't really care about those sections. I do find it interesting. Um, I think she writes about kind of isolation and living in this place and not really knowing why she chose to be so isolated in really interesting ways. So I am curious about this one. I feel like I'll probably give it like a 3.5 as it stands now unless and kind of really pulls things together. So there is that one as well. Um, and those I think are all of my reading updates. I also got this fun ring. I've always really liked rings as jewelry as you can see I have a nose ring and also I like like hoop earrings and stuff so I'm kind of I'm really into circular jewelry. I've not been a big like bracelet or necklace person but this ring was like catching my eye and I've worn rings in the past and I just didn't have one right now so I decided to buy one online. I'll put it down in the description box below. It was somewhat expensive but at the same time I like it so there's that and it's made by like a woman-owned you know us-based company so it's made pretty sustainably and ethically which i always appreciate i will definitely show you some of the dog as well i'm not sure how long she's staying but she's been an adventure as well and also just an added layer of like busyness for the past couple of days so i'm definitely hoping to finish this one by this weekend so i can start two trees to make a forest and then the other two i probably will continue into next week Hi all, so I don't entirely know how long it's been since I last updated you. It's been several days at the very least. I have been super busy this week. I was dealing with some like apartment stuff that I think I talked about in my last update, but I signed a lease for my apartment on Thursday, which was exciting for my apartment in Charlottesville. I also was talking to my future roomie on Thursday and also doing a cooking club. And then there was also some like summer job stuff that I was having to do. It was just kind of a week where a lot was happening and there was a lot of stress involved in several of those different things and i think that all caught up to me because yesterday saturday i just like totally had just like a bodily shutdown like i had a nasty cold really bad sore throat just like nothing good as you can see i still sound pretty congested so i pretty much laid in bed all day yesterday slept a lot read some books and like caught up on a lot of youtube videos which was much needed i think and i still don't feel 100 percent today so i think i'm gonna spend most of today pretty relaxed as well it is mother's day today but i wanted to kind of update the vlog because i have finished some books and i have new thoughts to share about other books so let's just get into things shall we so first off i did finish bleaker house by nell stevens i think i finished this one on thursday and i enjoyed this i gave it 3.5 stars i think the reason that i was interested in this which was the discussion of living on the falkland islands and kind of what living in isolation on one of the islands of the Falklands is like was definitely my favorite part of this and I think that kind of allowed me to enjoy this memoir more than I perhaps would otherwise. I didn't find the sections of this memoir where she kind of talks about relationships she has with other people particularly she kind of dives a bit into a relationship with a former boyfriend of hers who is very depressed and that kind of had an impact on her and their relationship. I just didn't really care for the most part with some exceptions and I'll actually get into an exception in just a second. I don't find familial relationships or just relationships in general covered in memoirs to be something I care about like at all and that's just not something that I'm that interested in reading about in nonfiction. I find relationships as discussed in fiction to be really fascinating and some of my favorite things to read about and so I most appreciated the parts where she was discussing the place she was living in and living in isolation and kind of the impact that had on her and so I think if you are interested in those themes you'd probably like this one. It also includes some of her fiction which I think other reviewers found to be annoying and didn't particularly enjoy her fiction and I'm definitely glad that she determined that creative nonfiction is kind of her way of being a writer because her fiction was not the best particularly she includes some sections of kind of very early drafts of this novel Bleecker House that she was attempting to write while in the Falkland Islands I um, mean the novel's just bad it's just not a good novel I'm glad that it didn't kind of 
come into existence so I was also kind of annoyed that it was featured here. She also includes a few short stories that she kind of alludes to and then in the previous chapter and then the short story would be the next chapter which I was fine with. I actually didn't hate her short stories a ton. I feel like they kind of met the bare minimum of like a short story in terms of having an interesting plot. The characters weren't the most developed but that's not something that particularly bothers me in short fiction as much. I didn't hate the short stories I think as much as some other reviewers have but I was kind of peeved with the fact that the short stories are like 10 to 20 pages but all of the like memoir chapters are only like two to five pages and so you'd read like a memoir chapter and then the short story would be the length of like four or five memoir chapters and it would be like one short story so I have to like stop reading at whatever time I was reading because the short story just like came at a time when I didn't have the time to like put into reading 20 pages and so it kind of messed up with the flow of the book overall which was not my favorite. All that being said I did like still enjoy it and would recommend it if a person going to a very isolated place and like trying to write a novel sounds interesting to you. I think she did a pretty good job with this memoir for that reason. I also have currently started Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica J. Lee which actually as I was just saying with Bleaker House I don't particularly like reading about familial relationships or relationships in general in memoirs but that's proving to not be accurate with this memoir because Jessica Daly is talking somewhat I mean it's not a central tenet of the memoir I would say but she's talking about her relationship with her grandparents who are from Taiwan well they were born in mainland China and moved to Taiwan and then moved to Canada and so there is this kind of secret familial history that Jessica J. Lee is trying to uncover both in terms of her mom's childhood on Taiwan and her grandparents lives in China and Taiwan that I am finding more interesting and I think that's in part because there's a kind of secretive element of it and she's discussing the kind of disconnect between the grandfather and grandparents that she knew and the ones that seem to exist within the kind of memories of the people living still in Taiwan. So I find that dichotomy to be interesting putting alongside a lot of other things in this book. I'm really enjoying it so far. The first chapter is very much focused on like language and linguistics which is not something that interests me and I think that's why I originally when I was deciding which of these two to read first I was like I don't want to read this one but then that has not been the central theme of the rest of this memoir so I'm not really sure why she opened with that because it didn't really draw me in as a like reader of kind of environmental nonfiction and the rest of the book while language is a part of it is not as important as the first chapter kind of made it out to be so I thought that was interesting but I also I'm really enjoying the way that Jessica J. Lee is discussing the environment of Taiwan. I think it's really well done and you can definitely tell that she's kind of trained professionally as an environmental scientist or I believe she's an environmental historian um, she's yeah a British Canadian Taiwanese author and environmental historian so um, and she has a doctorate in environmental history and aesthetics so I'm you can tell that she has this background in like environmental studies environmental history because of the way that she discusses the natural world which that being said you don't have to have that professional background in like western ecological processes slash western environmental history or the kind of ways in which environmental history is done to be able to talk about nature and interact with it and write about it in meaningful ways but I do appreciate that she has that background because I also have that background and so I can connect to this memoir on a deeper level because of that. It's also making me really want to go to Taiwan which I've not had a huge interest in like visiting China. That's just not a part of the world that has ever really interested me but in reading Eat the Buddha a couple months ago for the book two prize that got me really interested in going to Tibet which I've always been somewhat interested in the Himalayan region particularly like Bhutan. It's been a place that I've been intrigued about and kind of wanted to go to and so that made me very interested in Tibet and then this book is making me very interested in Taiwan. So perhaps it's that like mainland China is not a place of great interest to me but it's you know colonial subsidiaries are places that are of interest to me but yeah I'm really enjoying this one quite a lot I'm about 80 pages into it and it reads pretty quick so I feel like I'll definitely be able to finish this one this week if not like in the next couple of days and then I'm also chugging away along in fathoms I need to kind of pick up the pace in this one because I do think my audiobook is due back next weekend like the end of the springathon like the 14th or 15th and I still have like quite a bit let's see there we go I still have quite a bit left of the book and then I'm thoroughly enjoying still All We Can Save edited by Ayana Elizabeth Johnson and Catherine K. Wilkinson and um, this one I feel like is just gonna be a great like compendium of resources to kind of dig into into the future as well as kind of learning about them now I've been kind of looking up the authors as 
their subject matter interests me and been able to kind of find some interesting people that I maybe was not familiar with before but who are doing work that is really interesting to me which is always good so I appreciate this book for doing that obviously there's some kind of misses in the collection I think as is true with like kind of people that work in the climate sphere there's a variability in terms of people and their interest in the climate crisis as it relates to like taking down capitalism versus the climate crisis and its relationship to like indigenous history and the climate crisis and its relationship to the south you know there's different people kind of approaching it from different ways and some of those i'm connecting more deeply with than others but i appreciate this anthology or like collection for kind of bringing forth all of those different perspectives that different people can kind of grasp onto and therefore like take action in a way that's similar to that person so i really appreciate this book quite a lot super enjoying it so it is monday may 10th and i thought i would do a quick check-in i just got home from work not too long ago the little kitty's here sleeping with me i'll show you him in just a second but while at work i was reading quite a bit of two trees make a forest by jessica j lee i'm now on page 150 and i have a feeling that i could probably finish this one tomorrow at work so that is exciting that i'll have kind of this one done in a pretty short amount of time i'm really enjoying this one quite a lot i I am finding it a really interesting kind of narrative structure. I think for some reason elements that don't usually work for me in memoir are working really well for me in this book. I think the way that she's kind of talking about her family dynamics and interweaving that really seamlessly with her kind of experience in Taiwan, I think for some reason it's just like working really well for me and I just really like the way that she writes about Taiwan and its kind of history and the environment is really interesting. And I also ended up looking up Taiwan's history because I read the Poppy War earlier this year and kind of started diving into Taiwan's history at that time but I didn't get a very good grasp of it and then the kind of ways that her family is related to that history kind of comes up in this book so it made me want to kind of explore it more and I think I'm going to talk about that bit in my Asian readathon vlog which I'm working on that should come out in the second half of the month so I will kind of talk about more of my findings of my like historical research on that in that vlog. But I also wanted to mention that I've been continuing along in Fathoms by Rebecca Giggs. I'm 183 pages into this one and I was starting to read some other reviews this morning of this one because I'm starting to kind of not get along with it as much as I really expected to given how many rave reviews I've heard of it and so I was reading some kind of more mediocre reviews usually if I'm struggling with a book or there's just something about it I don't really like I will go and read a bunch of like three star reviews of the book sometimes even lower than that just to see if the things that other people had trouble with are things that I also am starting to see just so I can kind of mentally prepare myself for if this is something that's gonna be true for the rest of the book and several of those three star reviews and even some of the kind of lower rating reviews copied a link to a review of this book in the Sydney review of books which I'll put a link to down in the description box below because I feel like it really pinpointed a lot of what I was feeling about this book which is that Rebecca Giggs kind of takes liberty with language to the point that she actually is not really making any sense sometimes. She's very literary and philosophical, both of which are not things that I super appreciate in science nonfiction. Like I enjoy science nonfiction like this, that I, even though this is kind of more personal history nonfiction, the way that she talks about science is very clear and concise and kind of gets across the idea you know she talks about in this book like landslides in a way that I think makes sense even if you're not super familiar with the processes of landslides whereas this book honestly I mean she's included a lot of information about whales and their ecology and natural history and yet I've not really been able to grasp a lot of it aside from what I already knew from spying on whales which I think I've mentioned previously because it's just not written in a way that's super cohesive or like clear you know science communication is a very difficult skill and I don't think she has a very good grasp on it unfortunately so while the information here is really interesting and her introspections are really interesting um particularly as we think about humans and their relationship to the natural world and the way that that's been impacted by ideas of consumerism and capitalism. But I agree with the Sydney Review of Books in that the way that she philosophizes and the way that she uses language sometimes are to her detriment as opposed to actually showing off any sort of literary prowess. So I think I'm gonna read some more right now, maybe watch some YouTube videos, and I'll check in with you probably next when I finish to Trees Make a Forest. And here's the little boy. I don't think I updated you, but the dog that I showed previously, actually we have officially adopted. So um, she is our new dog and he's kind of afraid of her. So we're working on having them 
get to know each other. He's been around dogs his whole life. Um, or not really his whole life, but like the first eight or nine years of his life he was around dogs. But he's now had a couple years where he's just kind of pretty much been the only cat. Um, and so I think it's just like getting used to not being the only pet when he really likes to be the only pet. It's not been too long since I last updated you. I have done yoga though. And I decided because I was thinking about uh, taking on a like a jean patching project. I have a bunch of jeans that are either about to start to tear in kind of the like inner thigh area or they have teared and I liked that pair of jeans so I kind of want to fix them. And so this project I've been tooling around with in my mind for like several months and so I thought I would peruse this book, Wear, Repair, Report Vest by Lily Fulop, which I got as a Christmas present from my older sister this past Christmas, just to see if she has anything specifically about jean patching in this book, which she doesn't, but she does have kind of helpful stuff about patching and mending in general. So I was kind of perusing this earlier and realized that it's on my like physical TBR that I put on my Excel spreadsheet that I kind of keep track of my numbers through. And so I decided to take it off just because it's more so a reference book that I'd like kind of return to and not necessarily like read through and like decide that I've read it because it's much more a how-to than anything else and like a project book. So I'm taking this off my TBR which does kind of bring my TBR down a little bit but I have also been approved of a few arcs on NetGalley recently so I thought I'd kind of just share those with you as well in case you're interested in kind of learning more about them. All of them are not coming out for several months so there's some time but the first one that I got approved of a couple days ago was Five Tuesdays in Winter which is by Lily King coming out in November I believe and is a short story collection from Lily King. I read Writers and Lovers a month or two ago and really enjoyed it and then I've read Euphoria previously as well and I also really enjoyed that one so I'm excited to see her in short stories. I feel like she'd be a really good short story writer. I also got The Arbornaut by Meg Lohman, I think. Um, and this one, for anyone interested in Springathon reads, I feel like this is a pretty relevant book. This is a memoir of Meg Lohman, who is a conservation biologist slash botanist tree ecologist, I believe, who has spent the majority of her professional and academic career studying the canopy, the tree canopy, and kind of the biodiversity there, it sounds like. And this is basically a book about her life. So I think it's gonna have similar vibes to Hope Darwin's book, Lab Girl forgot what it was called for a second. So I'm super excited about this one and I actually will be reading this one in one of my art vlogs for August. So this one comes out August 10th, I believe. So do look out for that one if that sounds interesting to you. And then the last one I got comes out in October and that's San Foka by Chibundu Nuzu, I think is how you pronounce her name. And she's a Nigerian author who's currently living in London. And this is apparently part girl, woman, other, part American marriage about a young woman who goes back to Nigeria in search of her father who she has spent most of her life not knowing. And so I'm super excited about that one. I am really trying to limit the number of arcs that I request for like post September because I just don't want to clog up my reading or busy up my schedule with kind of more obligatory reading that I have to do when I'm in grad school. I mean I do think and hope that I'll still be able to read for fun during grad school because that's like a big stressor of mine but I don't want to be reading books that I feel obligated to read and that I feel obligated to like write cohesive reviews for and so I'm trying to limit myself but then I keep like seeing books on that gallery that I'm really excited about so I have like a fair number of arcs I think I have like two or three each month I have my May arc vlog I have two arcs coming out in June one coming out in July and then three coming out in August all of which I'm planning on reading before I move slash the end of my summer job at the end of July and then I have the San Foco which comes out in early October and then I have Lily King's November release and then I've requested like two others but they're both like rom com -y books one coming out early September one coming out early October I also would love 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 to get a copy of Sally Rooney's new book that's coming out in September but I mean that one if I could receive it early I probably would read it immediately so that there's not really a concern with that one so I'm not too worried with having like two books that are kind of on the more literary side that I have to read over the course of several months from now but that is something that I'm just trying to be cognizant of so yeah I've blabbled on enough 
now about things that are not at all related to springathon but hey all it is tuesday evening i'm still quite congested from my sickness over the weekend which is no fun i've been like coughing and hacking all day which is not fun at all but i wanted to let you know that at work today i did finish two trees make a forest and i think i'm giving this book five stars i absolutely loved it i feel like it really hit a lot of my very specific niche boxes like i'm very interested in ecology and natural history but i'm also very interested in environmental history and the intersection of ecology with cultural history and kind of cultural understanding and I feel like this book touched on those themes really well and then in addition to that it also touches a lot on kind of memory and family and the ways that we kind of understand one another and know one another I just thought this was so beautifully rendered beautifully done I really like the way that she kind of interwove the different ideas present here and I just loved it I mean I don't think it would be for everyone because I like I am a very niche market for this book but I, yeah I loved it definitely I think gonna be a favorite of the year five stars for sure but then I also wanted to share unrelated to Springathon that my pre-order of Stacey Abrams while Justice Sleeps came in which I'm super excited about I actually was able to get a signed copy because my mom and I will be attending a virtual event hosted by our local little indie bookstore that's the ticket for the event came with a like pre-order copy of the book so that's how I pre-ordered the book but yeah that's next Tuesday so I thought the book was coming out next Tuesday but apparently it was coming out today so the book was ready for pickup and I'm super excited about this one it's a legal thriller written by Stacey, Stacey Abrams who is my queen love her so super excited about that I was just reading the blur which I had not read previously and it sounds like quite a wild ride so excited about that one hey all it's Thursday May 13th I'm homesick today because as you know, I was sick over the weekend, and then I was feeling okay on Monday and Tuesday, and then yesterday, which is what we call Working Wednesday, which the kids are usually on Zoom, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, but on Wednesday, they have just a PowerPoint that they have to work through, which when you're in third grade is rough, so I basically have to kind of schedule our whole day and monitor the whole day like their teacher and I think that just kind of took it out of me and then any progress I've made towards getting better just like plummeted um Wednesday afternoon so I'm homesick today as you can hear it don't sound very good but I'm hoping that today and my day of rest will make me feel better I am hoping to finish Fathoms today I have like an hour left of the audiobook I'm like in the <clears throat> second to last chapter um, and I'm enjoying it. I think the same critiques that I had previously about it, I still feel. I don't think that this is quite like a book for me, which is unfortunate because I do theoretically love this type of book. But I think more kind of flowery nature writing, despite the fact that like that's the point of the Springathon is kind of this more flowery discussion of nature is just not as interesting to me as kind of more nature, like science and fact-based nature writing or nature writing that is tying in some other ideas like two trees make a forest or bleaker house was so that's kind of what i'm thinking right now i'm just not a big philosophy person in general i think it's part of the problem with fathoms as well because it's a lot of her philosophizing and i just don't really care so um there's that one i'm probably gonna finish that later today and hopefully feel better at some point so i can like wrap up this vlog with my final thoughts on that i am still making progress in all we can say which you can't really see very well but um i am like 100 something 130 ish pages into this i'm definitely going to continue reading it you can see i've not made a ton of progress definitely going to continue reading this one throughout the rest of the month but i'm really enjoying this one a lot and kind of appreciating taking it very slowly because i think there's just like so much here to unpack and think about in terms of climate crisis stuff so enjoying that one yeah i don't know what else i'll do today besides lie in bed watch youtube videos and finish my book so sorry this vlog has been kind of boring i mean i was sick for a long period of this vlog which makes it less <laughs> engaging in terms of fun youtube content but i've still been enjoying vlogging so yeah i think i will check in with you once i finished that so it's later in the day on thursday may 13th still don't feel very well which you know such is life i guess but i did finish fathoms earlier today so i thought i would give you my final thoughts on fathoms and also wrap up this vlog so in terms of fathoms i ended up giving this one only three stars it wasn't really my cup of tea unfortunately especially because i know a lot of other people on booktube really enjoyed this one quite a lot but i think for me there were two kind of main issues that i had with it and one was an issue i had with the style and one was kind of a more personal preference thing that i kind of differ from the author in terms of like an interest level so that's 
that's not necessarily a fault of the book that other people may take issue with so I'll kind of go through the writing style piece first which is that I think I mentioned this previously but this book just like really is a little dense is a little overwrought at times I think and I agree quite a lot with the Sydney review of books which I think I already said will be linked down in the description box below but that review really talks about how some of the word usage actually is just like incorrect like she's so enamored with kind of playing with language to the point that she's actually saying things that don't make sense like she's saying weaponizing a harpoon when a harpoon is already a weapon so it already has been weaponized based on its definition so different things like that kind of graded on me over the course of the book and I think listening to it too on audio while the narrator did a good job I think sometimes they got lost in the narrative and this was definitely a book that I kind of had to look at the text sometimes while I was listening otherwise I just didn't fully grasp what it was she was trying to say it was very convoluted in its writing style which I think some people appreciate a more literary tone but I don't particularly enjoy that as much I also would say that the kind of philosophical nature of this is also something I'm not super interested in I don't really like philosophy in general I don't find it that interesting and so this book with its very tangential philosophical musings that was kind of a negative for me that I think could be a positive for other people like I think this is kind of playing with the ideas that like Herman Melville's Moby Dick played with and other kind of previous iterations of nature writers like Elmerson and Thoreau I think that kind of more philosophical approach to nature and nature as a form of kind of existentialism and individualism is something that she's kind of playing with here and that's just not an aspect of like nature writing that really engages me that much but I know that other people feel differently about that so if you're more of a fan of kind of nature as philosophy I think you might enjoy this one more than I did and then finally the last piece and this didn't really come together until the very end when I was reading the kind of epilogue section and she's returning to a central tenet of the book which is the idea of like animal charisma as it relates to the environmental movement which is something that I think some people talk about particularly in terms of those that are on the more humanities and philosophy side of the environmental movement talk a lot about animal charisma but as someone who's trained in ecology I just think it's stupid <laughs> like I don't care about animal charisma at all and I don't think it should be a part of conversations surrounding conservation and ecological management just because animal charisma has nothing to do with like how we particularly how like western ideology perceives an animal has nothing to do necessarily with actually the animal's ecological value and in fact sometimes that can warp our ideas of what conservation should be and what it should look like and it's not actually like based in any sort of ecological practice or even like traditional practice. I personally have a lot of issues with kind of equating conservation with animal charisma and animal friendliness and particularly how those ideas are rooted in western ideology like obviously not every culture is going to think that the same animals are as charismatic because of their tradition and so I think that's an important piece of that too that sometimes I felt was missed a bit from this book. Granted she does kind of talk about that idea of charisma and how it relates to your own cultural identity a bit but I just don't care about charisma and that was a kind of central tenet of this book as well so yeah I only ended up giving this one three stars I think people who are not me would enjoy this a lot more and I was hoping that I would enjoy it a lot more than I did but yeah only three stars for Fathoms for me which is sad because it's like the most beautiful cover of all time and I mean I love whales I think whales are great but this book just like didn't really do it for me but that does remind me that I think I've mentioned previously Spying on Whales by Nick Penyonson which I read back in 2018 I want to say and this is like still an all-time favorite nonfiction book for me Penyonson is a paleobiologist at the Smithsonian and he works on whale evolution and whale fossils and so this is a great book in terms of someone who is a like, kind of primary scientist within the field talking about the evolution of whales and then he also touches a lot on the history of whaling and the impacts that had on whale populations and also kind of the future of whales with the climate crisis so I really enjoyed this book a lot and I think a lot of the positives that I found in Fathoms I found even more so in Spying on Whales so if you liked the kind of whale facts understanding more about whales as a part of a larger ecological system and the evolution of whales would highly highly recommend this one this was like a five star read for me so I just wanted to point that out in case anyone watching read and really loved fathoms and want more whale books this was one that I absolutely loved but then I also before I kind of fully wrap up the vlog wanted to show two exciting things that I think will be relevant to one another 
both that arrived in the mail today. The first of those is I just started subscribing to The Atlantic. I've always enjoyed reading The Atlantic and I've been doing these like research interviews with them because I'm kind of on like a email listserv to help them do kind of marketing research and so I using a gift that I got from doing one of my research interviews subscribed to a year of the Atlantic and the May cover story is one that I was planning on reading anyway because it's and it's just like absolutely up my alley which is return the national parks to the tribes by David Truer oh don't look at my address um return the national parks to the tribes by David Truer who wrote if you've been around on my channel for a while the heartbeat of wounded knee which I read right at the beginning when I first started my channel back in like March beginning quarantine March and April of 2020 still one of my favorite nonfiction books of last year and this is the Native America from 1890 to the present um so he is an indigenous historian slash anthropologist and he is super awesome and so I'm super excited about reading this cover story and I did listen to a podcast that kind of talked a little bit about it and it sounds like he doesn't have a plan necessarily but he just thinks it'd be a good idea and I think it'd be a good idea as well particularly given that um oh I forgot her name but the current head of the Department of the Interior is an indigenous woman from New Mexico I and mean, I think particularly if you're familiar with the history of the national park system and to the ways that it is very closely connected to the genocide of indigenous people in America and the expansion of white people to the west I think it would be a good form of reparation so I am super excited about reading that article and then I also got a book which I think will be relevant in just a moment you'll see why if it's the book I'm thinking of um yes it was okay so then I also got this book what I'm super excited about which is a mind spread out on the ground by Alicia Elliott and this is an indigenous memoir and essays I think and Alicia Elliott she was born in the states but I believe now she lives in Canada and she is Mohawk which I thought was a Canadian indigenous group but maybe she's an American semi editing Jenny here I haven't started editing but I wanted to clarify what I just said which is that Alicia Elliott is a member of the Tuscarona people who I should have realized based on where she was born and where she now lives but historically the Tuscarona people lived in the Great Lakes region between what is now upstate New York in the United States and Ontario Canada so she kind of has close ties to both Canada and the United States which is perhaps why I was confused because historically her people lived interchangeably between what is now a two defined nations they did not think of them as two defined nations obviously because they were one people that lived in that general region of the North American continent and this is a memoir that I've seen talked about a fair amount on booktube that I don't know a ton about the life spent between indigenous and white communities a divide reflected in her own family and engages with such wide-ranging topics such as race parenthood love art mental illness poverty sexual assault gentrification and representation throughout she makes thrilling connections both large and small between the past and present the personal and political so I'm super excited about this one I'll be reading this for the indigenous memoir prompt for the reading woman challenge which I bought several books recently for the reading women challenge so I think I'm gonna do some sort of reading women mid-year wrap-up video in the near future and like plans for the rest of the year but this is one that I wanted to get and it's relevant because both David Tour and Alicia Elliott are indigenous people writing about topics of indigeneity. Overall it's been a pretty successful reading couple of weeks I would say. I've read some other books as well that were pretty engaging and I am enjoying All We Can Save quite a bit and I do think I'll give that five stars eventually whenever I finish it. Yeah I hope you have enjoyed this vlog. I hope it's come together in some sort of cohesive way. I don't really know. If you are new to my channel I'd love to have you stick around and subscribe. Additionally I would be very curious to hear in the comment section down below what books you ended up reading for Springathon, if we had any overlap with our TBR slash reading or if you've read and enjoyed any of these books or just want to talk me about them down in the comment section below. I'd love to have you do so. I hope you're having a great rest of your day whenever you watch this and I'll talk to you next time.